Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna to take a look at Venom Lethal Protector number two by David Michelini. And also um, the artist, his name is Ivan Fiorelli. And uh, this is actually, I still like the art on this book and I overall like the kind of the pacing of it. It's very fast, it moves. Um, and so it kind of holds my interest a little bit. But at the same time, I'm also like still stuck in that uh, thing I had with the first issue, which is like, when exactly does this take place? I get a better sense of it in this one. It feels like it happens, I guess now, it feels like it must happen after Spider-Man first encounters the Blood Spider character and everything, which is a very small window between that issue and the one, you know, about 12 issues later where Spider-Man and Venom shake hands and make their deal that, you know, they're gonna go their separate ways and not fight each other. So it's a very small window that I feel like this could take place in because in this one, Eddie's also, he goes back to his job at the Daily Globe and he gets into more about, you know, how long it's been since, you know, I, I guess he lost and, you know, and broke up with him and, uh, and lost his job. But at the same time, like, yeah, but I feel like in the first issue, him and the suit are just getting to know each other. So it feels like it happened before the vault storyline even, and maybe even right around the time he first attacked Peter Parker or right after that. So I'm like, I'm still kind of confused <laughs> on exactly when, not that it's that important, but it's just when one thing happens and I'm like, okay, this is where it's set. And then a couple pages later, something else happens where I'm like, wait, okay, then then where is this set? That's where my confusion comes from sometimes. But I still, overall, this is kind of fun 90s kind of pacing and stuff. And I like that. And the art is really great. I actually really like the artwork a lot. It's very fun, very expressive, um, you know, with the characters' faces. And, uh, and, and so I dig it. Uh, but... Uh, before I get into any more, I want to give out the digital code because I guess they're doing that again. So boom, right there. First person to put that code in gets a digital copy of this book where Venom has his rematch with Humbug. Uh, also runs into the other yahoos that are still alive. He killed one of them. And then you got Blood Spider and one of the other guys who are still around. So he fights them in this issue. He also gets into a battle with Hydro Man in this issue, which I think this is maybe the first time or second time we've ever seen Venom and Hydro Man fight each other. So I kind of like that Michelini's doing that, where he's like, oh, I'm going to bring in some characters that are, that, you know, Venom hasn't had a ton of experience with. And, uh, and so that was kind of fun. And, uh, and actually Venom uses his brains, uh, surprisingly, to, uh, but it's like common sense brains. Like he doesn't, he kind of approaches it like a Peter Parker thing where he's like, oh, I'll change the chemical balance of water by adding in dish water, you know, dish soap or whatever it is that, you know, or laundry soap. Um, and so that kind of is what defeats our, our friend Hydro Man here, but uh, but still, it's like I wish he would have come up with it more of like a. I mean, I guess he kind of does it where it's like a guy who's just thinking of how he does laundry, um, and I so and not so much like a Peter Parker thing. The line he says feels like a Peter Parker line, but I'm kind of like trying to. I don't know. I'm like, ah, I wish it was more like just everyday Joe kind of the way he connects that dot. But it's still, I mean, I guess there's a little bit of that in there. And then he gets the nail gun and he's like shooting it and it's like threatening uh, Hydra Man. So there is some fun moments in here, I, honestly. Um, and the beginning is, you know, they wrap that up really quickly where he's he's got the suit and it's injured and he's trying to, you know, uh, get it to be active again and, and I guess talk, although they haven't really had a lot of dialogue. They have a little bit in this one, but you don't see what the symbiote's saying. It's just kind of inferred, uh, which was something they did in the 90s too. But this was interesting to me. He breaks into this little apartment uh, or like, you know, um, I guess it's like a, a cellar or something um, underneath a, a, one of that New York houses that he's there on the street there. And it's it has that little furnace. And this reminded me a little bit of Donny Cates' run where, um, where uh, Rex was and, and they had that little furnace in the corner. Um, I don't know, it just reminded me of that. I don't know if it's the same room. I doubt it would be, uh, but I just thought that was kind of neat that it, it, it made me think of that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's cool. That'd be a neat little, even if it was just like the artist having a little fun with the visuals and it wasn't planned, it still made me think of that moment in the run back when I when the Donny Cates run started and I was kind of into it for a little bit uh, before it kind of went all crazy and stuff and I kind of lost interest. Um, but it was it was it's cool. So yeah, they do a good job overall on this storyline and I I don't know I, I have fun with this but I do kind of like like you know there's those moments about continuity where I'm like 
where is this? Because Blood Spider, straight up, spoiler alert, uh, Blood Spider dies in this issue. And, and, uh, and, you know, and also Eddie, he goes back to the Daily Globe where he's able to walk past a security guard who recognizes him. But so I'm like, okay, so then it, this must be soon after he got fired if the security guard let him go by so easily, <laughs> I, I guess, because maybe I'm assuming he recognized him. But then he, like, the way he talks to this guy about, like, oh, remember we used to do that Roxxon expose? Made it sound like it happened, like, a year or two before. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that much thought's being put into this um, in, in that regard. And I, and I probably shouldn't think about it either. I should probably just ingest it as mindless fun. And I'm trying to, but m the way my brain works sometimes is, like, I, I like to know if you're going to tell a story that's set in the past, like Peter David's been doing with the Spider-Man symbiote Spider-Man stories, it's very clear where he kind of stages those stories um, in the run, uh, the previous uh, run when Peter Parker had the black suit. So when you're reading these new miniseries, it's it's pretty, it's not super obvious, but there's enough of a thread to kind of know where it fits in. And the Ben Riley one that's out now, um, uh, you know, that uh, DeMatteis is doing, that one also feels very much like you know where in the Ben Riley story in the 90s it's taken place. This one is it just feels a little all over the place uh, a, a bit, um, but it's still at the end of the day it's fun and I like the conclusion with the humbug thing, where uh, you know Venom's starting to realize hey maybe some of these villains are being paid like Hydra Man. I feel like I'm being hunted and it turns out he is by the Life Foundation and he hasn't uh, come to that re revelation yet. But all the things are set up and uh, Dr. Harwood shows up at the end of this um, after he defeats Humbug and he realizes Humbug is just a guy who was, you know, an innocent in a way and evil men. He want, he had a dream. He wanted to do something and, uh, you know, men and with power and, and money and stuff kind of ruined his life. And Eddie connects with that. Uh, and then while he's connecting with that, he kind of kills uh, Blood Spider. <laughs> so so now that trio of villains is down to just the one guy. Um so that's why I'm thinking, okay, this must take place after those issues of Amazing Spider-Man. But then, like I said, within 12 issues of that book, uh, you know, Venom returns in the Amazing Spider-Man pages and shakes Spider-Man's hand, and they go their separate ways. And that's a big, iconic issue 375 uh, storyline. And that's also where we meet Annie for the first time, too. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm just like, ah, when, 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 like, I need to know, I, and I don't at the same time, it's not important, but for some reason, it's itching at my brain, um, but yeah, and then Dr. Hardwood shows up at the end, and basically says, hey, I can eliminate some of your suit's weaknesses if you come with me, and that's what she's been working on, because the Life Foundation has an interest in the symbiote, and so this is obviously a precursor to the original Lethal Protector story, which is why it's so weird to call this one Lethal Protector also. Like, oh my God, I don't mind the title overall, but I, I, maybe it could have been called Road to Lethal Protector or something like that. Um, I don't know, whatever. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Overall, I did, I kind of liked it. It's, it's like simple, you know, 90s fun. Um, continuity things are a little bit of a, a, a pain in my butt uh, for my editing head that keeps scratching at me. But uh, the art's great, and uh, and I'm curious, so I'll probably pick up the third issue, and I'll just do this case by case. I'll just keep reading it until I don't like it anymore. <laughs> um, so hopefully I make it through the whole series so we can have a complete review of it on this show. Uh, but I do have another Venom thing that I'll talk about in the next episode, which is Savage Avengers, where actually Flash Thompson has shown up as anti-Venom again. So I figured I'd pick this one up too since I saw it on the shelf, and I was like, all right, there's some double current Venom action. I know I don't talk a lot about current Venom books or Venom in general lately uh, because I've been behind on everything, but I'm, I'm, you know, I keep saying this, but I'm getting back into it and check out my Megacon video. I go into a little bit more detail there, but I'm still not ready to talk fully about some of the stuff I've been going through. And when I get to that point, I will, and I'll share it with y'all. And, uh, and hopefully that'll answer a lot of, it, I, at least when I was going through things with work and uh and nate uh, you know my friend nate and stuff like as i explain it to certain people their reaction is wow th now this makes sense and this makes sense and now i understand this and it's almost like i've been a puzzle to some of these people as i've you know withheld what i've been going through and now they're starting to understand what, what's been going on and, and like i said i don't want to make this channel about my health uh, this channel is about my escape from that uh, you know uh, but lately i've noticed life has bothered me so much that a lot of that has creeped into this channel and i want to try to get some of that back out and get back to stuff that you know we all 
are here for, which is like comic books and things like that. So um, I appreciate you all, you know, being so patient with me. And and uh, and I, I say that all the time, but it's because I mean it very much. And I will have more Venom content for you and very soon, actually, because I'll put this video up the day after this video goes up. So uh, come back for more for Savage Avengers. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to have a conversation about Venom Lethal Protector number two. Does the continuity stuff bother you as much as it bothers me? Do you not care? Do you have a favorite moment, a, a, a non, you know, your least favorite moment? Whatever it is, let me know down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.